Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet. I'm welcome to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that happens twice a week where two old guys, one guy a few months younger than me, and then one startlingly younger lady, like dramatically younger, so so much younger. It's illegal I had, for me to be here. I had yeah, I had it to get her, I had to have her parents sign a permission <laughs> slip for her to come on and collect field trip money. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about old games. It's original flavor Wednesday, so that means we are going down Dorkley's top twenty five N sixty four games this week. Part one of Paper Mario. Woohoo! Yeah, that's my fault. I wanted to split this into two. No, I'm glad. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you suggested that because it's a long game that I want to finish. Yeah, I didn't. It didn't occur to me because I didn't think there's anything on this list we'd want to do that with. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned it first that I was that you planted a little mind seed, and I was like, yeah, I also want to finish this game. So the person slightly younger than me of Mega Man or no wait Kirby. of <laughs> Kirby. Well, I was gonna do one of those, a few months is of Shovel Knight fame. Ramon Castillo. Oh. And then, What's up? of course, dramatically younger than oh, me. Oh, dramatically younger. Dramatically. Right, okay, gotcha. Dramatically yeah, younger. I thought you were Ramon. I thought you were, you're like 16 or something, right? <laughs> 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 I don't know. All you guys are like so much younger. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I know Jorge was just on, but <laughs> we don't all look the same age, sir. Um, I don't know. I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm pretty fucking racist, Ramon. I think. <laughs> no, I, just, I think I know what I'm, I think I know what I'm talking about. You exclusively only see race. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. You don't not see only, gender. Not you only don't race, see but like else. heritage too. I'm like, oh, German. If you squint, you can see people's bloodlines. <laughs> it's, it's a whole thing. God, drastically younger, Nicole Nance. Hello. I don't know why. I almost called you by your maiden name. Don't know why. Mm. I don't know either. It's been several years. I know. Probably because you're in my phone as your maiden name. You should probably update. Well, see, it was it was Nicole Nance, and then nah. I unsynced it from Facebook, and it went back to your maiden name. I just didn't feel like changing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing the long game. We all have, we have that secret pool we have written down somewhere where we can't show you. So I, I'm not, you know, not changing my name if we get divorced. It is a yeah. little odd that you're calling her by her maiden name, and she's hosting with another man this time. What are you trying to set up, Tyler? We're just going to see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to do nothing, man. We're just see what happens. That's our Tyler. <laughs> well, I'm your bitter host, Tyler. And yesterday uh, was the only day during the week that everyone or my immediate family could celebrate Meg's birthday. So everybody came over. We got takeout because with a baby, we can't go out past seven o'clock anymore. They're like gremlins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So we got uh, Flamingo Row, which is a favorite restaurant of hers, take out, and we came over, and they gave her presents and stuff like that. And I was telling my dad, because he was asking more about Tadpog, asking when we were going to do it again, asking if, you know, what time he might call in. So he might have to pause this. I don't know. He might call. Who knows? But I told him, yeah, I was, I told a few stories about your, uh, your friend Craig, and him and my mom immediately rolled their eyes. And I was like, what? Refresh me on Craig. Uh, my dad's really dumb friend. Okay, all right. Oh. And then yeah, but you met my friend Craig. Oh no, I like your of of our first one hundred likes fame. Your friend Craig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, my dad's old, very dumb friend. Because I was like, yeah, wasn't he pretty dumb? And my dad just <sighs> the guy can't even play cards. We tried so many times to teach him how to play cards, and he can't play old maid. He's that he's that dumb. I was like, okay, great. And then dad told me a Craig story that I thought was funny. So I'll relate to you my dad's 
dumb Craig story. That when my parents had first got married, they were living in a trailer on the edge of somebody somebody's land. It's all they could afford. Uh, so they had this little trailer, and then beside them, like these very old people who had money, and they had all this property, and they had made um, a pond that he stocked with fish. They had a huge, beautiful dock, uh, but they never, ever went out there. And they had trespassing signs all over the place and high-voltage um, electric fencing all around their property. So Dad never, never fucked with going over there. But he said it was like about midnight one night, to hear someone beating at his door, and when he opens it up, uh, it's his, it's dumb dumb Craig and Craig, who's a pretty tall guy. Uh, I guess he knocked on the door with his head because Dad said when he opened the door, Craig was holding in each hand these enormous catfish. He was holding them by the gills, and they were about waist high. He was holding them waist high, and their tails were dragging on the ground. So he just caught these and then just like a caveman dragged two catfish over, knocked on the dad's on my dad's door with his head, and then held him up. I was like, we decided to go ahead and go to that pond. Dad was like, all right, let me get my, let me get my rod. So he gets his uh, fishing tackle, and they head over and maneuver through the electric fence and go fishing on this guy's property. Not happy with the two gigantic catfish that have already been caught, <laughs> right. apparently. Uh, <laughs> Instead of being like, let's cook order. those things and eat them, it's like, all right, I guess we gotta go take more. Dad's like, I only, I only cook what I catch. <laughs> so they go out, and Dad takes, I don't know what it's called, but I've seen them before. It looks like some kind of medieval meth. torture device. <laughs> meth. <laughs> it was... Um, medieval meth. It's this long chain that has... Like hooks hanging all over it for yeah. whenever you catch a fish, you hook them through the jaw on one of these hooks, and then there's like a spike on the chain, and then you keep the chain in the water so they you know don't go anywhere. Oh yeah, cat of nine tails. It looks like that, just like a horrible yeah. chain cat of nine tails. It's to distract all the sharks in the pond <laughs> so you can go swimming. <laughs> and and pedophiles. So yeah, Dad pedophiles. said like they fished there for hours and like completely filled up filled up that chain with enormous fish. And then, you know, pulled it up and then started to go back. And on the way, Dad and another guy that was with them, the two of them clear the electric fence. And they don't think anything about it. They clear it and they're walking. And they hear Craig say, hey, I'm going to shock these fish. And they turn around in time to see Craig just he holding the chain with di- tons of dangling wet fish on them. And he just holding on to it. Touches under the electric fence. <laughs> and Craig died. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Well, Dad said, like, there's no, it's only, they're only going by moonlight. They didn't want to take any, like, flashlights or anything out there, and there's no lighting. So he just said, suddenly, everything was lit up for a second. Because, <laughs> like, this huge, just, like, arc spike of, of light and electricity, and Craig screams. <laughs> and, yeah. That's when Craig, like... <laughs> merged with the fish. Now Craig's a catfish man. <laughs> now we haven't seen Craig. In a, yeah. He became a Mega Man villain. <laughs> man. Craig's real dumb, y'all. Craig's real dumb. My Craig's not that dumb. I love my Craig. <laughs> he's a bro, but he's he's not that dumb. And then he invented Craigslist. Yes. I like to think. Because he tried to sell slightly burnt catfish. Yeah. Uh, I mean, did it cook the catfish immediately? Did they just eat them immediately afterwards? Is that how it works? He's looking at his phone, not listening to me. What's up, Internet? I'm Dave. I'm your perspective <laughs> host. Is about Kenna. <laughs> <laughs> and I um, don't have a dumb friend named Craig. Um, I don't like catfish. I don't like to eat catfish. I don't like to look Ooh, at either. them. I think they're weird. I've always been scared of them because um, I remember like when I was probably in kindergarten, some second grader was talking about how their whiskers would sting you, and that freaked me out. Fish in general kind of freak me out. Um, garfish. I think I've talked about garfish before briefly. It is, I mean, it's Garfield, Dave. Garfield. Gar- That's a type of catfish. Gar- Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> um, those are weird. Fish in general are weird. I don't think I'd ever want to go scuba diving because um, – I don't want to look at all the weird fish. I remember having like a textbook when I was a kid. Um, I think it was my aunt's or something, and it had all those deep sea fish in it. I didn't want to go like I don't want to go in the pool after seeing the deep sea fish. All the photographs of like the um, 
like the deep sea angler fish and stuff like that. The mm. kind of things that, that look Donkey Kong Country fame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the fish that look like they belong in like the Monster Manual or something like that. No, Monster Manual Four. No, yeah, the Fiend Folio. Even I'm not yeah. Monster Manual Four. We're running out of ideas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just vaginas and fish. <laughs> what do you want? Some kind of like chandelier thing? All right, sure. <laughs> Cr four werewolf. Oh, okay, we'll we'll take a were we'll take a wolf. <laughs> Um, take off its front legs, put wings on it, tie dye the whole motherfucker. Fiend uh, it Publish it. <laughs> so anybody that probably most people don't know what we're talking about, in Dungeons and Dragons, the the pre published monsters and things like that come in these books. And the further editions go, they just they just put stupider and stupider stuff in there. Like to the point of absolute ridiculousness. What I just said is very much a monster in the Fiend Oh now. yeah, for sure. <laughs> anyway, continue. Well, have you guys um, ever read any of the old dungeon magazines? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean all the ones that Almost you gave me when you were done with them. Those are um, like the really, really old ones. There's some real gems in there too, as far as like monsters go. Mm-hmm. Like that is like the stuff that didn't make didn't make the Monster Manual four cut. <laughs> like there's some really. I think actually in the original Monster Manual, there's something called like uh, Ramon. You may be familiar. Tyler, you may be familiar too. A lava child. Are you familiar with a lava child? No. Mm-hmm. Um, does it does it look like a child made of lava? It looks like a giant baby. <laughs> oh god! That's the monster. That's the monster. It's like an ogre with a baby's head on it. Nope. And nope. they live Stay like out. they live in volcanoes, so they're <laughs> lava children. That you know, makes the volcano me... thing scares me less than the giant baby. <laughs> I don't know why I'm reminded of those the um, lava dinosaurs in Super Mario World. The blargs that you'll see, yeah, just poke up and then. Rawr. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it'll be yeah. But it's the baby's head going you have, to, you have to raise for eighteen years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if the monster defeats you, you have to raise it. Child support. Yeah. <laughs> Child support. It's very rare that that it one defeats you, but occasionally, yeah, you have to raise it for the rest of his life. <laughs> that seems fair. That seems fair. I like that. Yeah, that's it. That's really <laughs> it. I just want to talk about deep sea fish and stuff. Well, one so you have you have ichthyth- ichthyphobia. I almost couldn't say that. I mean, I'm not afraid of. Yeah, okay. May I guess I do. I know part of that word from the far side. Ooh. Yeah. Phobia. Yeah. Ich- it was an ichthyologist. <laughs> uh-huh. was what That's what they asked say. for on the far side. <laughs> like I have a lisp every time I try to say that. Ichthyphobia. Ichthyphobia. But I'm, da- guys, I'm drunk. <laughs> I didn't know you you felt like that, Dave, because the only other person I've known that has a fear like that was yeah. um, a girl who went to seminary with Meg who had a intense fear of fish any anything in the water so if we would and we had gone to like the beach before and she would walk out and just like start freaking out yeah it's not like to the point where like when i go to the lake i don't have an issue going in the water but like it it is i don't like it when something like brushes up against my foot or something like that i don't like that like that's no good i mean Um, it could be a monster it's probably not a monster but it probably is a fish (laughs) <laughs> well, my wife is afraid of whales. Really? Does that yep. interfere with her work? No. It's <laughs> very, very rare. Because you only see whales um, usually, you know, in like the northern Pacific or Atlantic or in Las Vegas. But um, <laughs> not, in, not, in, not in Illinois, huh? Not in Illinois. She's afraid of whales and icebergs. Basically, anything that she can't see the rest of. She lives in a very safe she, area. She's a reincarnated survivor of the Titanic. So, <laughs> And violin yeah. music. I don't know. She hates, she's afraid of all those. Yeah, it's weird because I would play vitamin string quartet and she would just start crying. For no reason. Underneath whale sounds. <laughs> Yeah, every time I just yawn for a really long time, she just runs in the other room. <laughs> Strange. What's up, Nicole? Hey. You got any? You got any stories? No. Anything? No, not really. Um. You ever gone fishing? Yeah. Or what are you afraid of? Uh, I'm afraid of flying insects. Yeah, you are. And I'm afraid of the dark. Yeah. I didn't know about the dark. I knew the the I've witnessed the flying bug thing so many times. Yeah. Cicada season was like hell for you it was pretty awful i thought you were kidding at first cicada (laughs) season i did (laughs) because like you i saw you here in the annex and you were like wide-eyed and you're like i don't want to go out there i was like oh nicole's being silly today (laughs) (laughs) because what was the thing you were explaining to me why they were horrible because something about there's something about their stingers oh they cicadas particularly yes they will um 
what cicadas do, they land on trees and then they have like a sticker thing that they stick into the tree to drink the sap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what will happen is they will land on your leg or your arm and think you're a tree and they'll stick you. Mm -hmm. They're pretty dumb. It yeah. sounds pretty dumb. <laughs> I can tell the difference. Like every couple of years. Yeah. Like, well, there's some are seven and some are like 14 or something. 13. Like that. Yeah. They just, they, they just woke in up in Dallas. And I totally freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty, they're pretty awful. Yeah. It, it sounds like there's a Cthulhu cult opening up a gate <laughs> for like <laughs> uh, two to three weeks, like every seven and 13 years. Yeah. 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 I know something about that. What are you scared of, Ramon? Oh, Jesus, Dave. <laughs> well, me too. <laughs> but I don't go to church often, so it's not really that big an issue. Tell us about your neuroses, Ramon. Let's just, op let's just open, that, let's open that door. I mean, you want to make this a three-parter? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? Um, let's see. Uh, you know, the crippling fear of failure. Let's see, that's one. Okay, that's um, a deep one. We can save that for your interview. It'll just be the one about <laughs> remote neuroses. <laughs> Dying alone, that's two. Um, what irrational fears do you have, Ramon? <laughs> uh, oh, Peanut butter? Uh, I said irrational. Uh, heights. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely afraid of heights. How about flying? Are you okay with flying? Yeah, I'm okay with flying because it's a contained box and, and like 100 other people would die with me. Yeah. So there's a... Extreme yeah. chance I'll just climb upon their corpses and yeah. be the only one to survive. You played yeah. enough JRPGs that you, you, your brain is said like I could survive this. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. It's weird. Um, it I, you know what though? I, I've, I've over the years I've gotten pretty good at psyching myself out uh, or or getting over it at least for a short period of time. But if I if I go to sleep or it's the next day, so say like I go to like a, a theme park and somebody just demands that I go on a, on a um, you know, like a roller coaster or something, which is very rare because everybody knows me pretty well. Uh, I'll be okay for the rest of the day. Um, but we'll go back to the same place, and I'll be like, nope. And that was a different guy. It's not me. I'm not getting on there. They could have changed things, you know, overnight. It, I don't, something could have broken. There could be a new ride operator, you know, who likes his job they less. To, they have to he simulate the, ex like, go back to the Lost Island. They have to simulate everything exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Um, crack so, podcast. Yeah, really, the only irrational fear is heights. See, crack uh, podcast did a thing about being afraid of heights. Yeah, that because was the most like, recent episode. I yeah, think. 100, 200 feet, like, is a natural thing to be afraid of. So, like, over, you know, you evolve to be afraid of that distance. But like in an airplane, that's so high, like, we don't have. Yeah, it's yeah. You can't. You're not naturally afraid of that yeah. because it seems crazy. Cavemen never fell from that height. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think it's like the most I've ever jumped from was about 45 feet. And uh, that was that was actually pretty cool because I was terrified. And it was when we went uh, on our honeymoon, um, and they had these things in Mexico called um, cenotes, which are basically just this huge um, sinkhole in the ground. And it's kind of like a cave, but it's uh, it's open up top so you can see the sky. God, sinkholes! Oh, I know what you're talking it, about now. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a it's like in it would be like somewhere in Kentucky would be like a water in hole, but yeah. it's sort of in a cave. Oh, there's the uh -huh. Great Benton sinkhole. If you haven't heard about that, uh -uh. yeah, there's one in Benton. Yeah, there's I didn't know one that. like they've tried tested to see the bottom, and it's like enormous. There's just massive really? sinkhole in Benton. Well, yeah. there's the one that just so opened up at the Corvette Museum too, and like oh, yeah. swallowed a bunch of cars. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a bunch in Illinois too. There's like a bunch of uh, mines and stuff that just opened up and swallowed up a bunch of people's houses. Yeah, uh, that's another fear of mine. While well, we're talking about fears, <laughs> fucking sinkholes. Sinkholes are like, yeah. like just the just the thought that the earth could open up at any moment and swallow me. That's pretty frightening. So everybody's afraid, it seems, of certain elements. Uh, you know, I'm afraid of the air. Yeah. Uh, um, you're afraid of the earth and water. I'm you know? afraid of the lack of earth, actually. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. You're very, you're very fond of the earth. <laughs> um. The cool thing is about cenotes, and and both terrifying at the same time, is you jump when you jump from forty five feet. You know, you go you go a good half of that distance if you if you go in pretty straight. So um, that was the that was the deepest I ever uh, was in water at the same time, and it was you know it was like instantaneous. Um, so you know, like your ears pop, and then yeah. it was so it was so deep I couldn't see the surface anymore. Um, and even being a really good swimmer. Um, I was I was a little bit afraid that I wasn't gonna make it to the top, and then I did anyway. And that, that's like, 
But there's like no regulations or anything in Mexico on that. There's no lifeguard that says you can't jump 27 feet <laughs> under the water, right? So, um, so we're talking but, to your so, ghost, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. When you I listen to this podcast, this is all just blank air and us laughing. So. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's why that's why the uh, the the D one is the only one I've. I'm using air quotes here. I was in person. That wasn't me. That was just a facsimile of me. We were channeling you. Right. Yeah, there was enough people. You, what, did, what did you have to get to summon me? Uh, bean burrito. Uh, hey, you see. said that. Uh, <laughs> uh, a, a, a container of dial soap. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, a, um, a father's scorn. Um, That's how you summon any of us, I think. Oh, Tyler, oh, yeah. Tyler, me, or you. It's just a father's scorn. A melted ice cream cone on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Uh, that isn't even my story. Um, but that, I mean, that is my fear. But I did want to. I did want to uh, bring something up because it reminded me of the day. I'm almost completely caught up um, about uh, Huddle House. Oh and, yeah, and, yeah. I knew. Yeah, you guys. Were, oh yeah. So because Tyler said the other day that you know Ramon wouldn't mind. Yes, I don't mind you saying anything about Huddle House. I have the same aversion to that place mm-hmm. as you do. Um, guys... Although I will still eat there, surprisingly, if I go to a different one, because I'm like, yeah, strawberry waffles for sure. You guys um, worked together, right, at Huddle House and Murray? We did. Yeah. yeah, Tyler and I worked together. I started working there maybe about a month before Tyler, um, and uh, and then just put him in for the recommendation. Um, Tyler did. Um, you did cook for a while, uh, and then you um, served for a little while longer. I always thought you were you were really good as a cook. Um, I never really. I guess you went to server because it made more money, right? There was, there was more money in it, yeah. Yeah, Short, See, but I shorter thought, hours, more money. Yeah, I always figured figure, though that you had more fun as a cook because I had more fun as a cook, um, yeah. which is different now because I like what I do now is basically like talking to people all the time. Uh, but I think um, what you them. didn't talk about mm-hmm. was. How much of a giant HR violation that whole place was. <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, do we think any of those people are going to are going to listen to the show? No, they're ever? all dead now. <laughs> okay. Oh, and I wanted, no to correct you. I wanted to correct you. J- Jeremy, the manager, he yeah. actually uh, he started working for Pepsi oh, okay. um, right after because I went to go apply for that job and um, they never called me back and. Turns out that they, they they gave it to him, which actually ended up working out for me. Um, but um, yeah, Jeremy was was interesting. Um, weird dude. Yeah, deep down, yeah, uh, deep down he was a really good guy. He was our manager, uh, but he he just kind of like he was a he was a kid with with too many toys, basically. Yeah. Like, yeah, like his dad was the owner and everything, so he basically just did whatever. And uh, yeah, I I distinctly remember, uh, yeah, quitting, like. Okay, well, guess I'm not coming in. This is awkward. Because <laughs> <laughs> I kind of already had plans. Anyway, giant HR violation. I'm not going to mention their names, uh, but there were several um, women that work there. Uh, and a couple of dudes. Um, that, uh, well, we'll just go with the women anyway. There was, there was an older um, manager there <laughs> that had, a, had a, actually a very porn star sort of name. Yep. Uh, You're yeah, not wrong. Like, I'm not and, wrong. And that's a that's the problem kind of though, cause, cause I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was he a cook? She, she, she was she. a cook. She had a porn star. Name? She was a manager. She did everything. Oh, okay. she did everything. And um, you know, in any other situation, she would have been really good at her job. She was, she was a really good cook, and the customers loved her. But man, she loved taking her tits out. Like <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 And um, you know, and notice that we're not talking about this affectionately. So <laughs> you, you, yeah, you know, like Ramon sounds kind of angry. We were, we take our pits nice. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like I, it's it's weird to think about it this way again because because we were you know maybe twenty two and twenty one at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're young impressionable guys, right? So we're like, yeah, tits, right? But no, no, <laughs> no, right? Because if you're, we're gonna say we're gonna say forty ish maybe 50 ish mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. which is fine it's you know it's whatever if 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 you want if you're 40 or 50 and you want to take your tits out um uh, that's your prerogative take her but, age divide it by 10 yeah. that's how many teeth she had left <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's just like it's, that's you know, how many teeth her tits had to, like, 
we went down to Tennessee and we went to those horrible trailer park um, sort of uh, strip, strip clubs. clubs. Yeah. yeah. Like with the one girl that that grabbed a uh, grabbed a um, a uh, bill with her 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 roll, right? <laughs> just imagine, just imagine this person being our manager, so we can't say anything. I right? don't know. I think you could. Well, we didn't know that back then. Right? Okay, right. We okay, just, sure. We were just young guys, and we're like. Oh shit! Well, I guess and, this like, is okay. Was, yeah, and it was like pretty weird because Tyler and I. Yeah, it's pretty well, weird. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tyler and I didn't work a lot together with her. We worked a lot together, but it was pretty rare that that we would be working on the same like overflow shift that she was working on. Yeah. But occasionally we would, and that's when I found out that he thought it was weird too. Because I'd like look, I'd look at him, and he'd look at me, and it'd be like the. He'd make that face like, uh, yeah. Were customers there? It, like- it was her goal to freak me out because I'm generally un- kind of unflappable. Like she'll say something and I'll just nod and do it or nod and go along. Mm-hmm, yeah. She wanted to make me freak out. So she would just Which do I lost, shit. I just, <laughs> I just fucking lost my mind every single time. <laughs> like even back then I was, you know, I was just lawful, right? I was like, what the, what, what, ah, what do I do? Where do I do? I don't know where to look. <laughs> right? So like, uh, but not only that, but there was like, she wasn't the only one. There was also a, a younger assistant manager the, sort of ish girl. The, those um, I appreciated. Yeah. Those, those breasts bad. I appreciate. Wait, she took them out as those well. Bre- those <laughs> breasts I was made to touch one time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. work at this restaurant and these women are just, Flashing you guys? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. surprise this randomly. Is the first well, I wouldn't say out. like. I mean, a flash of implies lift your shirt, showing them for a few seconds and yeah. putting it back no, this down. Is like, this is like cooling them off. <laughs> it's in the a hot show, room. really. This is a show <laughs> that we're yeah. getting. Do yeah. they ever like, so, like go over the griddle with them? Like, oh, I like to feel no. these little bites. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just just flop them down. Just <laughs> burn up, burn off my scabs. Because <laughs> uh, it's like I go to the kitchen and make bacon. It's like, man, say goodbye to my forearms for the rest of the day. <laughs> I can't imagine walking around a Huddle House kitchen with my tits out. And, and it's it's all windows. So, <laughs> but, yeah, but, yeah. like so, customers, they, the, the worst part usually of customers it weren't in the store. Okay, or we were in the back, or, or we were usually <laughs> and, like no. If she knew them, it was fine. Or oh, we yeah. were in the back room or something like that. And what are they all like, oh, there's old Alicia Rocks again with her tits. We know her with her tits out. <laughs> Just old co- gobbler's tits. Don't worry about it. Well, uh, let's go with uh, – what should we go with? Daisy? Daisy's a good one. That we'll works. call her Daisy. Uh, but, yeah, so, like, we would be working – we would be working, like – on the floor, right? But we'd be in eyesight of the back room, and there would just be old tits. Mm-hmm. Just and she'd be smoking, right? Be smoking <laughs> with her old tits out, just airing them out next to the the friggin' vegetable dicer, right? <laughs> I'm like, oh his shit! Name was I gotta go his name was Ed. So. Uh, uh, not only that, there's you know there was like dudes getting blowjobs in the walk-in, and yeah. Yeah, I, so. I remember hearing about that. Like somebody walked into like the walk-in where one guy was yeah getting a, yeah I didn't a walk in head on from that. a server. Sounds <laughs> like a real classy place. Uh huh. It's yeah. Huddle House. They, Come on. It got shut down for a while after we left. So. Yeah, and the only reason the only reason I came back is because I was working at Baldy's Grill and it was much more miserable than Huddle House. Oof. So there were no I came tits. back. There were no tits at Baldy's. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not gonna. Oh, that's a story for another day. Why Baldy's was so terrible, uh, but uh, but basically, Baldy should have been shut down from day one for completely different. Like we're talking like OSHA codes and that sort of thing like that. But I remember one time, uh, basically, I, yeah, I was just like, yeah, this place is terrible. I sorta, in a weird way, miss you guys, and I'm like, my eyes are just like wide open. I just like, I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's why I went back to other houses. Is basically I went from one level of sort of completely HR non-compliance to basically like hell, right? Yeah. And I was like, well, old tits ain't so bad. <laughs> was that part of the re- was that part of the re-interview? Like Ramon, 2015. Eh, old tits ain't so bad. <laughs> ain't so bad. <laughs> so yeah, so that's my huddle house story. Um, yeah, I got several places. I worked in Murray. I worked with Link, obviously, and uh, he who shall not be named at one point. We'll talk about that one Ugh. at some point. 
There's so many, so many shitty restaurant jobs in Murray, Kentucky. But that is it for me. I'm afraid of heights <laughs> and old titties. You guys want to talk about Paper Mario? Yes, we can do that. That's a game. Yeah, that's a game on the list. Yeah. Dave, do you hear that? I do hear that. It sounds like um, <laughs> look at my tits. It sounds like huh, that's it's weird. A, yeah, huh. so it's like it's an old toothless lady hag. Oh, I thought it was a ghost. Flashing her tits. <laughs> I thought it was a ghost. <laughs> Show, the showing ghost of uh, tits must pass. <laughs> my titties. Showing her spectral blossoms. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I do hear that. <laughs> I do hear that ghost train rolling out of the station, which, of course, um, brings us to a segment that I like to call, we like to call, they read some Wikipedia. Okay, guys. Paper Mario, known, known in Japanese as Mario Story, or uh, Mario Sutori, and originally known as Super Mario RPG 2, is a role-playing video game developed by Intelligent Systems and published by Nintendo for the Nintendo 64 game console. It was first released in Japan on August 11th, 2000, and in North America on February 5th, 2001. Uh, Paper Mario was re-released for the Wii's Virtual Console in July 2007, as well as Wii U uh, in 2015. Paper Mario is set in the Mushroom Kingdom. As the protagonist, Mario tries to rescue Princess Peach from Bowser, who lifted her castle into the sky and has successfully defeated his foe after stealing the Star Rod from Star Haven and making himself invulnerable to any attacks. To save Mushroom Kingdom and get back Peach and the castle and defeat Bowser, Mario must locate seven Star Spirits by defeating his minions guarding the star spirits, which can negate the effects of the stolen star rod, uh, which Bowser uses to render himself invincible. Uh, The player controls Mario and a number of partners to solve puzzles in the game's overworld and defeat enemies in a turn-based battle system. Uh, The battles are unique in that the player can influence the effectiveness of attacks by performing required control inputs known as action commands. It goes on. It's a pretty long long entry, but... I feel like that gives us a good starting point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, cat, cat out of the bag immediately, for me at least. Meow. <laughs> F- fuck, man, I love this game. Yeah, you love it, man. It is the first thing on this list that is N sixty four exclusive that I N sixty four exclusive and that I haven't really played before. That I'm just like, man, this is a good game. I love this game. I also liked it. Uh, I'm not done with it, which, of course, I'm excited that we're going to talk about it again Mm -hmm. um, because I got about, I feel like I'm probably about halfway through the game, and uh, this is, I probably got about, honestly, probably like 10 hours into it, and um, I want to play more. I want to finish it. Yeah, I definitely, I'm totally with you. I really want to finish this. I didn't think I was going to like it. I didn't think I was going to like it at all um, because I... Because it's an N64 game, honestly, like I'm not gonna lie. Because because this list has been like so like heart wrenching for me that I was like, all right, great, here's another one. I didn't even buy this cartridge because it was like, fuck it. I'm tired of buying these games that I like look at. I'm like, hate I hate you. Go, oh, I hate you too. Nope. So glad I bought this. Um, so I bought it on the uh, virtual console for the Wii, um, and. It's a really good game. It's a really good game. It's a really good game. It's amazing. It was like, oh, the first one I don't buy the cartridge for. And it's like, oh, I would like to own this game. This would be nice. But, okay, because Ramon, you said you enjoy the game. Yes. I enjoy the game. Dave enjoys the game. We can't have have so much joy on the episode. Nicole, how did you feel about this game? I just want to say I'm... (laughs) <laughs> I'm really excited that you guys like a game on this list. <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. I didn't like this game. Of course. No. She, she's lying. She loved it. She just, we didn't like Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> so she's just coming on just, 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 just to rile us up. Yeah. Well, it's weird, Nicole, because I was thinking about you pretty much the entire time I was playing it because I know how you feel about Super Mario RPG. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm playing Paper Mario and I'm like, man. 
man, I bet Nicole would love this game. <laughs> like, I would just, the whole time I was like, oh, I bet she'd love it because it like fixes all the problems that I've thought that you had with Super Mario <laughs> RPG because like there's less platforming, right? And um, that was the main thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I do feel like it's better. Yeah, I, I agree. I will define my opinion of this game by saying I think Paper Mario is better than Super Mario I think RPG. It's, I do too. You know, it's really weird mm-hmm. for me to hear you say that. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Ramon, do you agree or disagree? Um, well, I haven't. The, the only difference is I got Super Mario or Paper Mario on rental, so I didn't beat it. But that being said, it is an excellent game. Um, but I have a lot of nostalgia for Super Mario RPG, but I also didn't play it as recently as you guys. So... I mean, I'm willing to accept that that is an answer. I don't know if it's the correct answer. <laughs> well, speaking of you saying, like, you like it, but you didn't finish it. I want to give, I wanna I give would, Nicole though. an opportunity to defend herself. <laughs> I don't need to defend myself. I will defend you then. I don't know what to say, but I want to defend you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got quiet. I was like, all right, go for it. <laughs> other, than like, other than, like, you were little, and it's hard to finish a huge, huge game. But you could still make it to close to the end and still thoroughly enjoy a game, and it's okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're defi- That's how I defended. Feel about it. I, feel, <laughs> I see. Yeah. See, you're not defending her. You're just defending me. Um, <laughs> I, I thoroughly enjoyed everything I played about the game. Uh, I did the same thing with Thousand Year Door. I didn't own either one of them, um, but uh, but I did go on to play the the third and fourth entry and beat both of those and loved those. Um, it's a good series. I mean. Nicole's just, you know, wrong. Well, why why didn't you enjoy Paper Mario? I think that the majority of the reason I did not like this game is because this is one off the 64 list that I had not played before. Hmm. But I had played Super Paper Mario and loved it. Yeah. And then I start playing this game, and it is not the same at all. Like, no. Completely different, and so I was just really, really disappointed. What's the big difference? Because I haven't played Super Paper Mario, and that is that for Wii or Wii U? It's for Wii. Okay. Mm-hmm. Super Paper Mario is like a platformer with RPG elements, as opposed to Paper Mario being a on RPG with some platforming, limited okay. platforming. But it's completely different. I like. It's, Go ahead, Ramon. Oh, it's pretty much, with the exception of some drastic turns on the 90 degree angle it's pretty much 2d um so that platforming element that nicole hates in like 3d is not prevalent it is the super paper mario is my favorite of all of them that i played so i get why she likes it so much it is what this game does in 30 hours super paper mario does in half the time okay and Uh, just because of the combat system or yeah it's just a lot it's a lot faster um the humor is um, the humor is, it's just as good as Sticker Star, which is the fourth one. Uh, they just cultivate their humor so much better in the later, in later it's, ones. It's really quirky. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's, it, I agree. I will agree with Nicole that it is the best one of these, of this series. Uh, but I still like regular Paper Mario too. That's, um, that's hard for me to believe just because I like this game so much. <laughs> I like this game so much. I'm not done with it, and I'm already bidding on Thousand Year Door on eBay. But do you like it for the system, it. or do you like it for the story and the humor? I like it for the system. I do. Because <laughs> it's like, and that's why I'm a little disappointed that that's taken out in later games. Because Only I, that one, though, because it comes back in Sticker Star. Okay. Because I really like, they keep the active battle from Super Mario RPG. Mm-hmm. And that's like something I, that I really like about Super Mario RPG. Well, it was ti- timed hits and timed defense in Mario RPG. Same thing. They, just they had to change it because it's not, it's not square. I guess. Well, and, so. and this is the same. This is the same publisher, um, Intelligent Systems, that goes on to make Mario and Luigi games. So that that time, that action, um, you know, like you press A to complete your jump, or you press A to duck or block, that goes on to their their later games. You know, like like Mario and Luigi, uh, Bowser's Inside Story. Yeah. And all those. So and those have the same humor too. So it's like a whole separate universe of these kinds of games, which I think. I like all of them except um, Dream Team. Well, it's I think it's a really cool system because it keeps me engaged in the battles, and it's that's something that 
when I play Final, I still love Final Fantasy VI, of course, but like when I play it for like the fifteenth time, it is easy for me to like fall asleep in the middle of a battle because mm-hmm. it's like, well, I'm just kind of grinding levels out at this point, mm-hmm. and it's kind of boring. But like, I don't have that experience in Paper Mario because I I always want to get. Uh, I always want to hit A at the right time to deal two extra points of damage. I always want to hit A at the right time when I'm being attacked to um, avoid taking damage. Um, so I like that. That's like an engaging part of the combat that that I enjoy. I thought that was like one of the most frustrating things. Really? It was, the, yeah, the source of pretty much all my frustration just because I, f- I was really bad at it. I, I'm also really bad at it. I, would, I could 100%... If every time in Mario RPG, I'm really bad at it in Paper Mario. What I like is it's cool to me. It's cool because each enemy has like a different attack animation. So mm-hmm. you have to like learn when to hit the A button to deflect some of the damage. Yeah. And I like that. That keeps it interesting for me because it's like, okay, I'm fighting a clubba. And like they do this thing where they have a club and they raise it over their head and they keep it over their head for like a really long time. You have to like anticipate when they're going to swing down on you. Yeah. And when they do, you hit the A button and try to deflect some of that damage. Uh, meanwhile, you've got Goombas that like just launch themselves at you in an entirely different pattern. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like that because it's it keeps me engaged. Like I, <laughs> And then every attack also has a different style of... Of timing, yeah, like each yeah. one of your attacks, yeah, yeah. Or some of them are like, like some of them yeah. are pressing the A button at a specific time, and some of them are holding the control stick. Yeah, yeah. I was much better at the control stick ones. Oh, to like pull back as opposed to timing a jump. Yeah, and there's some where you uh, have to wiggle the stick. Um, yeah, for and, bow. Yeah, for bow, mm-hmm. and like I like that. Like I, I think it's a cool system. I like it because it doesn't feel. It feels like there's some like level of skill to the game that um, just enhances it. Because I don't. I, I at no point do I feel like if I didn't master this, which by no means have I mastered it. But if mm-hmm. if I don't master this, I'm not going to be able to finish the game. It just feels like to me. It feels like kind of a bonus. Where it's like it's kind of like a mini game inside the combat. This the way you talk about it makes me think that we should at some point in time do Shadow Hearts, the the I, PlayStation oh, RPG. Man. I haven't played Shadow Hearts because it has like, a similar system. Really? In it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has that wheel, right? And it, and you have to. It's like a clock. The wheel of fate, or the yeah, the clock of fate, or something like that. Yeah, you have to stop. You have to stop the hand inside like a little sliver. It's like ten percent of the whole wheel. And uh, and the closer you get to it, the the better you are. Basically, the closer you are to a critical hit, and oh, if you completely cool. whiff, yeah, uh, you'll you'll miss. But like as the enemies get harder, it's it goes faster. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I would try that. Um, I I like um, I like that kind of stuff. It, it I think it keeps it interesting. I, I think it's a unique uh, tool for an RPG. Yeah. And I also like that. Um, it reminds me of earthbound where you can, uh, get first strike. They call it first strike Mm -hmm. in paper Mario, where if, uh, you see an enemy coming at you, you can either jump on it or hit it with a hammer. Uh, and you will get to go first in the combat. Um, th- that's really cool. I, once again, and some enemies have different defenses against either one of those. Yeah. So you have to know what's going on. Like Goombas will have spiked hats. So yeah. if you try to jump on it, then you're you'll fucked. get hurt. Right. I, I, all that kind of stuff I think is really neat. And it's, um, not something that I'm used to in RPGs beyond like earthbound where it's like the things that happen outside of combat have an influence on the combat itself. Like that's, that's neat because it's like these two parts of the game are married. There's a tie between the two of them, yeah. so I think that's cool. It also makes me excited for you to play Mother 3, and I didn't do this because I was horrible at it, so I just skipped it completely. But Mother 3 has a system built in to where you listen to the music in the battle, and you t- you can time your hits along oh, with the rhythm of cool. the music to increase oh, your yeah. damage. I like that. Ooh. So, but I, yeah, I, I couldn't even start to do that, so I just straight up just fought regularly. Yeah, yeah that, and that, it that sounds okay. awesome. Um, I like the partner system in this game. I like um, because it, it's Mario essentially, and then at any time he can have a partner with him. And my favorite thing about the partners is that they are classic Mario enemies. And I, I love I love the fact that you can roll with a, a Goomba, 
You can roll with a Koopa, uh, a, a, a Koopa Paratroopa, and a Babom. A pink Babom. Yes, Bombette. Bombette for life. Yeah. And uh, my favorite so far, Bo, the, the Bo Boo. That's really good, yeah. She's a lady. I like Bo a lot. Boo. I like Bo Lady Bo. Bo. Bo's ability is almost broken. Yeah, her like single target damage. Is well, that what you're talking that, about? Or the transparent Well, her thing? slap transparent. and her transparent yeah. thing. Yeah, the thing about her transparent, because she can make Mario transparent. And yeah. that makes Mario avoid a, a, a whole attack for a round. But she can't do it You avoid enemy aggro if you do it outside of battle. So yeah. if someone's charging at you, you just go invisible and they get confused and can't find you. Yeah. Or do it in battle and you're just invisible for a turn. Yeah. It takes a little while. It takes her a while to recharge, though. So you, it's not really easy to abuse. Yeah. You can't do it over and over and over again because she can only do it every other round. So I mean, that's cool. I like that they thought about that mm-hmm. instead of it being like a, a win button essentially. So I do. All right, it's a little bit of a monologue, but I, I want to take you down this rabbit hole okay. that doing research for this game. Okay, because. One, when this game initially came out, I refused to play it and hated it. Solely because it wasn't a direct sequel to Super Mario RPG. Like, right. how do you mean? Oh, just because... Like, it, it wasn't like Legend of Seven Stars or? 2. So I was like, no, fuck that. Oh. They had that. They could have done that. They didn't. I'm not playing this fucking game. Of course, I didn't know what was going on. I wouldn't even yeah. get... Back then, for many years, my scope of games was just JRPG or GTFO. That was it. I didn't care about anything else. With just very, very few exceptions. So, but now I'm glad playing this, so I've gotten to play Paper Mario, and it's fucking fantastic. But back then, I didn't know why they didn't do it. So, I wanted to answer that question fully for myself. Yeah. So, I went down this rabbit hole of very interesting information about Nintendo, and it kind of leads into, like, a lot about the game industry. Because from just researching this one question about Paper Mario... I can basically see that Sony with the PlayStation is on top because everyone else around them just fucked up. Like in the year 2000? Is this what you're saying? Or like, like, I feel like it was a perfect storm. I feel like currently it was a perfect storm of everyone else making mistakes. Uh And Sony just stood there and suddenly they're on top because everyone else just did stupid, stupid shit. Because, all right, I'll start saying it. uh, Let's see. A former uh, president of Nintendo. Um, Hiroshi Yamaguchi. He was the one before Iwata. He was the president for 55 years. So his dad was the president before him. And, okay, like Japanese culture for business is they don't like sell their businesses. They always want to pass them on. They don't like sell them for billions of dollars like we do over here when you build a business, sell it. They always want to pass it on directly to their children. So his, the incumbent president, his father, suddenly had an unexpected stroke when he was in college and he had to call his son back from college like i want you to take this business i need to give this to you we this is an emergency thing we ha- i have to give it to you yeah and his son would only take it if everyone else in their family was fired from nintendo and he was and would be the sole person in their family just to be in nintendo from that point on is this when they were making like playing cards and stuff so this was before this okay. was like in 55 okay. or something like that. Okay. So, uh, and the da- like basically telling his dad, like, fuck you. If you want me to have this, then I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. And he had it was to like do like a some game of th- hostile takeover. Yeah. Some Game of Thrones shit. It was shit. a Game of Thrones shit. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And th- I mean, this guy's personality is why a lot of stuff, why one, why it succeeded, but at the same time, why a lot of shit fell apart. And this guy's toward the end of his tenure. Yamaguchi? Yamaguchi. Okay. So, Yamaguchi is like, Huge ego and kind of a chip on his shoulder. So he takes it over. He fires everyone in his family that works for Nintendo. Just him at the top. He's super young, so people don't know what to expect out of him. So like pretty soon, there's like a huge strike in like Nintendo. So what? They're pissed at him. Uh, it didn't. My reason oh, didn't okay. say what exactly okay. what it was, but there was just a strike. But I can assume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what he did is he went through. And, like, all the people who have been there for, like, decades and decades and decades just fired everyone who'd been there for a long time. And, like, Japanese culture is, like, once you find a job, you basically have that job for life. Yeah. So he fucked a lot of people over, just been like, no, you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out, and installed people who were allegiant to him. 
which by the time he, I think he died in 2013, but like by that time he personally was worth like $7.8 billion. So he was a good businessman in most regards. But okay, just a terrible human being. Just yeah, just a terrible <laughs> human being. So come, all right, come the NES and it fucking rules all. Yeah, uh, come SNES dominates Genesis. Because do- I'll bring up Genesis in a second. Okay. So Genesis still does well, but Super Nintendo, fucking king. So after these two, Yamaguchi is still just like, what the fuck are they gonna do to me? I've this is my plan. I'm gonna follow through with it. So in '64. He doesn't want to change anything. That's why it's still cartridge based. He doesn't want to change it at all. He's got Square in his pocket. He's got Capcom in his pocket. No one's going anywhere. Meanwhile, okay, so the SNES was supposed to supposedly get a disk drive right. that was discarded. Right. Sony picks up that idea, turns it into the PlayStation. Sure. So one his one his mistake and refusing to change leads to the development of the PlayStation. They don't have anybody in there though. They're just they just have this console. Right. So then come. In 64, he refuses to change the technology. Final Fantasy VII is under production for the N64. Right. So then Sony comes in to Square, and he's like, CD-ROMs are the way of the future. Come in. You can make a better game. We'll give you more creative you know, license. Nintendo's very particular about cussing and sex and all that kind of stuff. Right. And Sony's like, you can do whatever you want. More, more money, better hardware, whatever you want. Come under this. So Square's approaches Yamaguchi is like this is a better deal will you upgrade the specs in the N64 Yamaguchi tells him to fuck off so they he immediately loses square burns yeah. burns that bridge which was a big deal for someone like me like when <laughs> like, honestly like when square was like uh we're not doing games for Nintendo anymore that was that was a big deal yeah. because it was like I guess I'm exclusively owning Sony <laughs> systems until that changes yep. right so then the in SNES cast off now suddenly has fucking Square under their belt. So now immediately with Final Fantasy VII, which was a game changer in the industry. Right. Okay. So then Sega is still going strong though. Sega released the Sega Saturn. Right. Completely fucks yeah, that up. Makes absolutely. that awful. So Nintendo right. and Sega both the biggest leaders in the industry completely fuck up and just propel Sony to the top. Just one fell swoop. They have they have everything, and Yamaguchi also fucks up his relationship with Capcom, so they don't do nearly as much stuff for the N sixty four and push everything. That's why all do the Mega Man X's there? are on the PlayStation. Uh, so the only thing that I know that Capcom, uh, Castlevania sixty four, which was garbage, but ugh. PlayStation gets Symphony of the Night, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. Mega Man sixty four. Which I don't know much about it. I've heard it's good. Paul Kluwe wants Paul us to Kluwe's, play it. Yep. He's sending it to yeah. us. Paul says it's so, good. but I mean, they they fucked themselves with that. So, how did you find all this researching paper, Mark? Because <laughs> we haven't we haven't connected the loop yet. <laughs> yeah, what, I feel like but it's wait, coming. How does the story end. <laughs> so, whenever they lose Square Enix, then they lose all the Mario RPG property. Right, because Square so, Enix developed that. Square right, Enix with them. developed all that. Oh, uh, okay. So then. But of course, Square Enix doesn't have the Mario license, so then that just means Legend of Seven Stars is just that's just lost to bureaucracy. That's just right. it. It's done. But Nintendo still has that property. They still do have a good what Ramon? What's the intelligent systems? What intelligent was, systems. Yep. Intelligent. They so they step in, steal a lot of shit from Square Enix, but make it work. And then okay, still fur, furthermore, in sixty four, they're supposed to get this disk drive right to to compensate for things like that. Yamaguchi says he no he doesn't he doesn't want it cast it off again, fucks fucks the, the N sixty four over, so and then supposedly like he also was horrible about uh, third person developers, a third party third party developers thank you yeah that he just like unless you directly work for him you could fuck off so he was horrible about working with them so yeah, basically their licensing fees were super high yeah so whenever he stepped down. Awada took over, and Awada was just like, he saw what, where Yamaguchi fucked up and then flipped all the third party stuff over. So, where, where he was the opposite of Yamaguchi in that he was like, supposedly super humble and came to the third party developers and apologized and wanted them to come work for them. And that which then, makes, yeah, that's that finally makes a ton of sense. Square Enix, which fucked themselves, they fucked them, they had to eat crow at this point whenever they fucked up the Spirits Within. Because then they had they waited for Awada to take over, and then came back to Nintendo asking if they could publish for them again because they nearly ruined themselves with the Spirits Within. 
So then that's why all the content then comes back to the DS and things like that. So and Crystal Chronicles, right? Crystal, oh, yeah, Crystal yeah. Chronicles is also a big one. Well, and Capcom came back with their biggest game of of since Resident Evil Two, which is Resident Evil Four on the GameCube exclusive. So that was that was a big deal. Um, so yeah, that makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. So I just found that whole all that just because I wanted to know why yeah. I thought all that shit was pretty interesting. Why it's not Super Mario RPG Two? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then also like all right, further double down on the Paper Mario like. The N64, super underpowered. So I feel like this is sort of the start where Nintendo takes the um, the different... Taking their graphical limitations and working with it and making stuff that just looks different, which is cool and a pro, Yeah. but I feel like they're at kind of at the point now like why the Wii U isn't doing spectacular is one, trying to emulate the Wii, but two, how amazing amazingly powerful the xbox one and ps4 are and then we you they're just banking on well, let's make it look cute like we did the other times we don't need to pump awesome hardware into it no one cares about that now i think finally they do back when the n64 i feel like they could kind of get away with it in comparison to playstation but yeah I feel like that gap has gotten wider every generation they're falling on art direction um which yeah, I agree with you. That that comes and goes. I mean, I think like Rayman Legends is amazing, um, but it but they lost exclusivity on that for the Wii U. Right. Um, so like all like all the Mario games just look like Mario games at this point. Um, the only the 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 shining beacon of hope. Well, one obviously I'm a freaking Smash Bros fanatic, but um, but Bayonetta two on the Wii U is like the only is the only thing that is different enough but also seems sort of like it could be on the Xbox One or the PS4 that's like they could do it if they really tried but why I mean why bother you know yeah it's too much work I don't think a lot of people buy Nintendo consoles currently for anything other than first party software just the five I or mean, six titles that are exclusive to Nintendo I mean, yeah I mean they the five out. or six properties I mean there's more games than that I mean I I plan on getting a Wii U even though the next console is coming out like next summer. That's um, crazy. But I, I still plan on getting one because there's a bunch of games on there that uh, I still want to play. And I it's I, I kind of think, like I realize, yeah, you're right. There's like a huge gap between like um, the hardware and mm-hmm. what the system can do. But at the same time, I kind of feel like that's kind of smart because it's like let Microsoft and Sony fucking fight it out over that shit. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do our thing that we know sells because people want to play Mario games. Yeah, it's like you can't play a Mario game on the Xbox, and it's a, some people that's all they want to do. They know Mario from since the '80s, and they're like, "Okay, I want to play a Mario game. I don't want to play, you know, this property that I don't know anything about." That's why I got a Wii U first, just because mm-hmm. like all of this stuff on the Xbox One and PS4, most of that I can play on my PC, right? And better in a lot of ways, but like. I'm not going to see Zelda, Metroid, Mario on, on my computer. So, like, it's right. Wii U or bust. So, and I think there's a lot of power in that. And I think, I mean, obviously, I don't know any of this stuff, but I feel like that they realize that's a strength. Like, that's their biggest strength. And because of that, they can use a different strategy than Sony and Microsoft, who really, I mean, they have properties that are exclusive, but I mean, nowhere near the staying power of you know mario no, they don't carry that weight yeah i mean just because nintendo's been doing it for a long time and they've been doing it well mm-hmm. as opposed to like sega and sonic who's like well, yeah they oh. really think that and they, the ceo has come out and apologized <laughs> publicly apologized for the state of sonic the hedgehog yeah. and it's going to make it better it's like when Domino's came out, like, we know <laughs> yeah. our pizza sucks. We're sorry. <laughs> We've been making Sonic out of cardboard for the last 10 years, we realize. Well, and to be honest, the internet has ruined Sonic the Hedgehog, too. So, <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Google your name in Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> You'll find him. Um, yeah, man. It's just, but yeah, it's just, this is a great game. I'm going to get off on a little rant here, too, for just two seconds. Um, but Nintendo lately, this year is 2015. If you're listening to this podcast, uh, has uh, been trolling us for years now. So with uh, oh, we're gonna come out with a new Metroid. Yeah, that's the thing that you guys want the most, right? <laughs> oh yeah, new Zelda sounds great. 
And then they oh, come yeah. out with these one-off titles, right? Like Hyrule yeah. Warriors. This is a cool-ish game. It's not a Zelda game. Right. It's a fucking Dynasty Warriors game, <laughs> right? With with Zelda with a Zelda costume pack. Because Nicole, it. you have that game. Mm-hmm. What do you do? You did you like that game? I didn't play it. Okay, but I said I don't imagine you played Dynasty Warriors, so I was wondering your take on no, it. No, I watched Josh play it, and it did not interest me at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Link, Link loved it. I was like, this is fun to play with Link. I'm gonna return it when he goes home. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it's like that, but like, and then like Metroid at E3 this year, everybody was like, oh, we're going to get a new Metroid, it's Metroid Prime, it's like, we're going to make up for what you guys did with other M and all this stuff, and like, just shitting on their own franchise for so long. It's like, it's like Nintendo with Metroid feels the same, is like the same with Capcom and Mega Man, and obviously I'm wearing my Mega Man shirt right now, so I'm very passionate about this, mm-hmm. but like, stop my number shitting. Nine, though. I know, I know, I've already, I've already backed yeah, it, but yeah, it's like, me too. But it's like, stop shitting on your own like franchises, it's like, yeah, you made an off game with with Metroid. Stop trying to sell us 3DS games for Metroid. Yeah, it's like obviously you have the fucking hardware to make an awesome Metroid game. You have a gyroscopic screen that you can use as a scanner. Yeah, this thing that you told us was the coolest thing ever in on you know in the GameCube days that barely worked would work fantastic now, right? And you're not making it. Yeah, I, I mean, I will say, I think that brings up another good point, is I think Nintendo is, like, the king of underutilizing the hardware that they develop. Yeah. Because, like, they develop very specific hardware for their consoles and then do very little with it. Yeah. Well, and they're coming out with Star Fox, and, like, they're like, this this is basically what it looks like. And everybody's like, that looks like Star Fox 64. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's like, and it's, like, the same quality of audio and everything. Yeah. I'm like, they, yeah. like... It's just like Square nowadays. It's just trolling. It's like, well, okay, we want your comments and tell us what you think and what you really want uh, in the future. Lol. And now finally Square has delivered. <laughs> oh, yeah. Finally. Or will by the time we're dead. But <laughs> yeah. You're talking Coming about the, re- the remake of Final Fantasy VII? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I nearly just shat myself right there. I was like, <gasps> So you believe it. You believe you it, right. man. <laughs> yeah. I think. Um, that's got to be so low priority for them, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it has to be low priority. I believe we'll see it, right? We'll see it, but it's going to be like, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get it's to It's going to be like StarCraft 2. It's going to take yeah. like fucking 13 years to come yeah, out. Because I, I read that because the CEO of, of, Square, of Square Enix was reluctant because he didn't want to be known as just making old games instead of new properties. So that's why he said he was so reluctant for so long, because like if he does this and it goes amazingly well, because everybody's going to fucking buy this game. Yeah. Everyone will buy the remake of 7. It's going to be crazy. And then what are they going to want? Probably that a remake is like of 8 or this, remake of 9. Yeah, maybe not 8. <laughs> I mean, I like yeah. 8, but I think even they'll look at the books and be like, I don't know about this. <laughs> I mean, if they made 13-2 and 13-3, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Oh man. Well, you know, lightning's easy on the eyes, I guess. But I feel like Nintendo, like Yamaguchi, took it in a very certain direction and made it profitable, and then started fucking things up. So then Awada took it over, turned it around, and now with the Wii U, Nintendo's hurting, and now Awada suddenly dies. So like Nintendo is the next CEO, president and CEO of Nintendo, is in a precarious and like huge opportunity. Pivotal. What's coming on yeah. next? It's pivotal for Nintendo about yeah. what is happening next. Yeah, I agree. Hey, at least there's yeah, always uh, the handheld. Yeah, as long I feel like that's like as long as they keep their foothold. Uh, huh? They keep their foothold in the handheld. <laughs> <laughs> Hand foot, not the <laughs> And Paper Mario. That's still a good game. You get that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nintendo is. Yeah, it's mobile. It's uh, gonna be a sleep monitor. That sits on your nightstand and uh, basically watches you sleep and records everything. That's not creepy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is Josh saying? What did Josh say? He says that um, Nintendo is branching out into home health systems. They've announced that they're developing a sleep monitor that sits on your nightstand and watches you sleep so it can determine your quality of sleep. <laughs> hey, my Fitbit does that yeah. and it just tells me I don't sleep very well. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, my, my company does that already, um, and people think it's creepy. Well, <laughs> um, that seems like that's a, a Japanese thing to do. I don't know how in America that's going to fly. 
It's they, a they mirror. Call that Go to sleep. Life device, right? <laughs> I don't care about like how good I sleep. Just give me some drugs. This is America. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to exercise. Cheeseburgers? I just want to take drugs. <laughs> Says the person Eat who takes burgers. a lot of drugs to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and exercises. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Paper Mario is, is good. It's, it's, it's game good. Good game. <laughs> well, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we're gonna, there's going to be a part two. I feel like in the part two, we're actually going to talk more about the game. Um, if, if you're curious about how this game looks and plays... I strongly urge you to check out uh, mm-hmm. what's Paul playing today. Uh, Paul did a playthrough. Uh, well, I mean, I shouldn't say playthrough. He played the game uh, and streamed it on Twitch. Uh, I'm sure you can find that on on YouTube, on his channel. So if you haven't had a chance to play the game, uh, check that out because it'll give you a good idea of what Paper Mario is all about. Um, I, can I put a disclaimer? Yeah. Ignore the first 12 minutes of him hating the N64 because it has nothing to do with <laughs> this game is. I was like, "Fuck, Paul! I guess, I guess I didn't like this game." And then he's like, "I really like this game." Like, what about me? Well, it's gonna be—it's way worse on Paul because he's trying to emulate the N64, yeah. and that's just like, "Oh man!" Yeah, it emulated. Yeah, you gotta have the okay. virtual console HDMI out this thing because I saw it too. Oh, you had yeah. like artifacts and stuff. That's gonna yeah. be rough. Yeah, I really—I don't know. I, if it's me buying it on the virtual console that made a huge difference because it like goes back to what I've talked about in previous episodes where it's like, um, this game looked great because I wasn't playing it on an N64 on a modern television. Right. I was playing it on mm-hmm. the Wii, which was emulating the game. So it looked really crisp and clear. Everything was bright. Uh, it sounded faster. great. Yeah, loads faster. And, and that's one thing I was thinking about when I was playing this game was I don't know if it's because I'm playing it on the virtual console or just because of how Paper Mario was designed. Paper Mario, to me, felt like a modern game. Like, someone could have told me, oh, here's this game. It came out three years ago, and I think I could have believed them. Like on Steam. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because it's like, I, I mean, it doesn't look, it looks like it's designed Time, timeless art style. Exactly. It's designed to look that way for a reason. Mm-hmm. And it and that reason doesn't appear to be um a hardware constraint. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a cookie analogy here. Okay. All right. Because mm. Nintendo the way Nintendo operates basically Yoshi's in the N sixty <laughs> in the N sixty four up, I I will liken to uh Chinese cuisine. Okay, why is that? And that by comparison, I'm gonna look at Sony and Microsoft as French cuisine. Because, like, Chinese cuisine is all about taking what you have and trying to use as little as possible to make it delicious. Okay. So it's not like you're taking a peasant's ingredients and very little fuel and very limited hardware, like a wok, a small flame, and then yeah. whatever you can grow. Uh-huh. And that's what the Chinese have done. And, and I think Chinese... Here's my culinary opinion. I think China and Japan have much better food than Fran- than France or I- any places like that that's renowned for their food. Because more like, imagination. Yeah, ex- exactly. They have ingenuity, to use their ingenuity yeah. and they have to and they and they made it good just because they had to, right. as opposed right. to like French cooking, which is all about decadence and uh-huh. these huge like foie gras, truffles, like these over the top ingredients, yeah. richness like. The Xbox One does with all you know the huge hardware, uh-huh. and then you just get these very beautiful games without a lot of substance. But mostly each each mostly, but you know each have their have their strengths. But yeah, playing both of those it reminds me of cooking. So that's just that's just what I do. No, I think that's a good analogy. I uh, I think that one I really admire games that do a lot with a little and uh, i think with nintendo it works out a little differently than i'm no one's gonna be surprised here i love blizzard um and i i love how blizzard handles um a lot of their properties and a lot of their design decisions are based around uh we want this to run on as many fucking computers as possible 
uh, because we want our games to have a lot of breadth um, and make a lot of money for us. Uh, the more people who can buy the game and play it, the better it is for us as a company. Larger the community. Yeah, exactly. So like Sierra Games is like, no, we're going to make just like this one operating system for like one game. Right, so. exactly. <laughs> so it, like they kind of remind me of Nintendo in that regard because like sometimes they design for like, they when they design like World of Warcraft, for instance, it's like, let's design this so it'll run on a potato so mm-hmm. that the people with the really nice machines will have a great gaming experience but the people who have like a potato are gonna be able to still play the game yeah they won't know the difference (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) (laughs) like we want this to run on an n64 is it possible (laughs) you know you say that like i go to i would do walmart bought a bag of n64s otherwise there's potatoes (laughs) they made didn't they make a version of starcraft that was on n64 uh, I don't know. Oh, man. I don't know. I think they did. I'm going to look it up. Hold on. <laughs> Please do. I know Diablo <laughs> no. made it to PlayStation, but I remember seeing I remember seeing that at Josh's house. PlayStation Diablo? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Found it. <clears throat> All right. The uh right now used on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> at the time of this Starcraft recording. 64. What would you say <laughs> because you something you didn't know existed until 5 seconds ago. Yeah, I had no idea. StarCraft 64, huh? How much is yeah, it? I, I don't know. It's 40 It's $44. Well, yeah. It's a pretty good price. I mean, it's the perfect it, price for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty that's that's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Star, StarCraft 64 um, was actually a really good game from my understanding because it allowed two people to play on the same um, screen. Like the, Basically, they could be um, wow. two people versus the CPU, okay. or you could do split screen um, – Starcraft, you know, standard, you know, just, uh, you know, Terran versus Protoss or whatever. Um, so I, that was pretty cool. But yeah, Starcraft actually went to 64. So very good analogy. Awesome. Uh, on everybody's parts. Kudos. Yeah, good job today, guys. Good job, team. <laughs> really, really moving the chain. We did a great job talking about Paper Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we essentially just did another shit Monday on a Wednesday. <laughs> you, you read from Wikipedia. We talked about like partners. That's why. Yeah. Um, my honestly, my favorite thing about all these all these games is the humor. Like yeah. far none. Um, these and and you know Nicole backed me up on this one. They're, these games are quirky. Yeah. Like it's like they don't really care what your sense of humor is. They're gonna pull you into their sense of humor, and you're gonna enjoy it. Well. Um, I'm glad that you say that because I was reminded when I, when I played this game, it kind of like played out like a cartoon in certain parts. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to get too specific. Tyler, have you played, have you met Tubba Blubba yet? Yeah. Okay. Are, are you done with that chapter yet? I'm in the shy guy box right now. Okay, cool. The, um, the part in the game where the booze all show up to help hold the door when Tubba Blubba is trying to like, bust his way out of the castle mm-hmm. to eat all the ghosts, all the booze. Like that reminded me of a cartoon. And because of that, I I started thinking, I was like, this game is like way better than the Super Mario Super Show. It like could like if this game was voice acted, like this could be um Man. a fucking cartoon. Like this game could be a cartoon, like an interactive cartoon. Uh, Mario doesn't say fuck like he did one time in Mario <laughs> Super Show. <laughs> <laughs> he could. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, he just he just makes random movements. <laughs> he doesn't speak in this one. <laughs> Um, which is actually my one of my favorite things about because Intelligent Systems um, goes on to do those other games where they do the fake fake Italian. Oh where, boy! Where, like Mario and Luigi would be talking to each other and they're like, <laughs> and, like nobody knows what they're saying and they don't actually say what they're saying. Yeah. Right. In this game, obviously Luigi talks, um, which yeah. is a big deal. It, it spoiler alert: it's a big deal that Luigi talks in Super Paper Mario. Um, cause Luigi's a big freaking deal in that game. Hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the, the humor is great. Uh, I, have you guys gotten to the part? Cause basically the last part I played was the, um, or that I remember distinctly was the four Koopa brothers. Yeah. Uh, the Ninja Turtle yeah. parody. Yeah. Loved yeah. It. 
<laughs> absolutely loved it. Uh, and the fact that they could like they had ninja skills, so they could disguise themselves as other uh-huh. as other creatures, as toads in the toad yeah. village. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. And, the- and they said, "Is it is it because our hats are black?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the the humor you're talking about it being quirky. I totally forgot about this. Um, did you guys ever do any like the side missions? Uh, yeah. Because there's like little side quests to like open up warp uh, tunnel yeah. warp pipes to yeah. different areas. Did you do the quest where you talk to the oldest Koopa in Koopa Village, and he asks you to get a videotape back from the old <laughs> Goomba in the Goomba Village? And he's like, "I bet you want to know what's on there, don't you?" I can't. I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you that. <laughs> and then like you're like, okay, I guess I'll go to Goomba Village. And you go to Goomba Village and you talk to the old Goomba there. And he's like, oh, old Koopa wants his videotape back, huh? I can't tell you what's on there, but it was great. <laughs> <laughs> so you're essentially just like carting it's, pornography from one old monster to another old the, monster. Because the, the, the item's a VHS tape. He yeah. hands you. <laughs> <laughs> Interspecies pornography. Oh. I think it's Koopa Crone. Is Koopa the, Crone, is yeah, you're name. right. He reminds me a lot of uh, Cranky Kong. Because his dialogue is all like shaky. Shaky, he's wavy. Old. Yeah. <laughs> and every time you do a favor for him, he's like, hey, all right, here, just accept this. And he gives you one gold <laughs> coin. Yeah. And then he gives you the silver membership for mm. the... Uh, a casino, I guess you call it. That's what pretty much. I didn't want to start a new ch- uh, that deep into a new chapter before you recorded, so I just did a lot of his quests today. Yeah. So you get mostly just like a ton of shit ton of star pieces. Did you play games in the casino? Um, I've only unlocked one, and that is the um, woo man. This was a frustrating part for me. The jump attack. Yeah, where you've got the eleven blocks, and you you hit the blocks, and you try to get collect as many coins as you can. It's but- just random, right? I don't know. I really, fr- I did it like three times and I, cause you have to pin 10 gold coins a piece. Right. And after three times I was like, fuck this. It seemed random. Well, I, I did it too. And it was like, <laughs> it was really frustrating me because like, okay, there's 11 blocks and there's that you have to hit, you hit them. Either a coin's going to come out. Five coins are going to come out. A multiplier will come out or fucking Bowser will come out. If Bowser comes out, it's game over. And um, the odds never seem to work out the way that they should because there's three different games. You can choose to hit five blocks. You can choose to hit seven blocks. You can choose to hit nine blocks. Um, the more blocks you do, the the better the reward. Like if you like if you do a, if you complete a nine block, they fucking like double your money. So it's amazing. But it seemed like. I mean, I would hit two blocks and I'd get a Bowser. Like, on the second or third block, it's like, this doesn't... It's like, I did it over and over and over again. It's like... Oh, yeah, so it's Mario Party. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't seem to like... The odds didn't seem like they were correct at all. Which made me wonder, is like, is it actually like, okay, two out of these 11 blocks are Bowsers? Or is it like you hit a block and it just rolls the dice? And it's mm-hmm. like, okay... There's a one in six chance this is going to be a Bowser kind of deal. Hmm. That just reminds me of what something that Paper Mario does for the Mario universe that hadn't been done up until this point. Because in every Mario game, you're Mario fighting these various enemies trying to get to Bowser. And every entry, it's the same thing. Even in Mario RPG, it's all everyone's your enemy of the monster type, except for the few in like Monstro Village. They're the, they're the rare exception. Yeah. What Paper yeah. Mario does is basically sort of define Bowser has his military. He employs, yeah. but the people that are in the military, they aren't of like, they're not an evil race. Right. So mm-hmm. the world is still populated with Goombas and Koopas yeah. and Boos. And they're, they're not all bad. They're not all under his employee. Just a few are fighting you because they joined up with him. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. It opens up the world to like, it's actually a fucking mushroom kingdom. There are tons of different kind of species. Yeah. And to bring it back to D&D, um, I was actually thinking about that when I was playing it, Tyler, and it reminded, mm-hmm. I, it reminded me of Eberron, uh, which is a campaign setting ah. where it's like, just because uh, a chromatic dragon is usually evil doesn't necessarily mean that it is evil in Eberron. Yeah. Um, so I, that reminded me a lot of that because you see a village full of Koopas and you expect them to attack you. No, they're actually pretty cool because they don't follow Bowser. Mm-hmm. Goombario and yeah. uh, Goombella. That's you, the the quiz. I got the quiz yeah. wrong. Like Get the first wrong? three or four times, I got it wrong. Really? 
because at w- once, like, I was just like trying to scroll through the text. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay. I answered the question. You accidentally right. answered. Okay. <laughs> What's the Ch- uh, Is it Chuck Quizmo? Is that yeah. the character's name who yeah. shows up? Yeah. And asks you questions. Mm. I haven't failed one yet because I got lucky. And when he asked, what color pants was King Goomba wearing? I was like, ah, red, <laughs> red and white? Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had that one yet, so I'm glad. There you go. It's red and white. Spoilers. (laughs) And then there's um, also, I don't know what kind of creature he is, but he's like the shady crow looking dude. Um, I can't remember what his name is, but he's he's like, give me 36 coins. I just now found this guy. Have you done anything with him yet? Yes, I regret it. I almost texted you like, don't do the thing, because he's like... Give me 30, I think it's 36, but like, give me 30. Normally it's 360, yeah. but I'll only charge you 36. <laughs> give me 36 coins and I'll raise one of your stats. All right. That's how about, yeah, as Tyler would put mm. it. Uh, so I give him 36 coins. Uh, you get to choose one of your, if you want to raise your HP, your FP, right? It's FP. Your flower points, yeah. Um, or your BP. Uh, your badge points. We haven't even addressed that. We'll do that in part two. We'll do two. that part two. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. I chose uh, my badge points because I, I like I, I like the badges. Too, yeah. I like the badges Ooh. a lot. So he's like, okay, all right, I've adjusted it. I've raised your badge points. Um, but in order to do it, I removed five from your HP and five from your FP. So uh, goodbye. <laughs> and then he disappears. <laughs> that kind of thing's just to be expected. <laughs> <Bump>. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's like balanced. He's basically making a choice for you from a previous level. That you didn't want to make two choices, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, mean you, I guess I got six badge points, but then I lost five from both those stats, yeah. and I hadn't Yuck. put that much in those to begin with. I put everything in badges, so suddenly, like, I'm now like ten hit yeah. points, pretty far into the game. That was that was another frustrating point in the game for me because it does essentially like when you level up, what you do is assign what of those three abilities you want to put five points in. That's mm-hmm. pretty much all you do when you level up. Yeah. Um, and for him to do that, it's just like, all right, you went you went down at least a level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not going to be doing that again. <laughs> well, yeah, he shows up again, and I'm doing this, like, arrested development style thing, <laughs> or like, okay, well, he probably won't do it again, <laughs> right? Like, if I do it, he probably won't do it again. <laughs> so I haven't done it yet, but I'll report back next <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're we're about at time. So let's wrap it. I will save questions and achievements and beards and glasses for for next time. Yeah. Oh, you, are you gonna be? <laughs> you sound disappointed. Are you gonna be back next time? Are you gonna come back for part two? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I'll be back next time. Hold hold on to what you got. You wanna play it some more, Nicole, and then come, then come back. You wanna play the game? I was playing like? it till right before I came over here. So okay. All right. Good. I might actually go back and play it now. Sweet. Well, I'll be on vacation now. So perfect time yeah. to play video games. Yeah. That's what I like to do on vacation. Yeah, I gotta spend time with people, though. I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> point, point well taken. Or have your son play it and then just watch him. That's there awesome. you go. Ooh, yeah, yeah. That's another yeah, thing. Sure. This is like I, I, this is like my first RPG, kind of. Um, like I, I feel like a young child could play this game. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not necessarily get all the jokes because I think right. some of them are. Kind of over their head. Like um, Bryce is movie. just now getting into Minecraft, mm. and um, kids love Minecraft. You know, yeah, they do. They do love Minecraft. I don't know if it's like a like a red flag or not, but he does love throwing villagers in the lava. Um, <laughs> That's just a kid thing, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just it's I, a boy I just, thing. Yeah, hey, I'm just like there's plenty of you know that we don't throw people in the lava in real life. He goes, yeah, but. I pushed him in the lava. I'm like, yeah, that's cool, man, but just not in real life. This is this is. <laughs> I Minecraft, wish you'd have been Daddy. like, you have lava. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clearly, all we, we all have this lava here, Dad. <laughs> oh no, oh no, yeah. Then we then we played the floor is lava, and he's just throwing everything in: <laughs> dragons, teddy bears, action figures, Legos, Mama. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, apparently that's that's Bryce's thing. You got lava that's insurance though, lava. right? You're covered. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've got sinkhole and lava insurance. <laughs> and whale. Yeah. And whale. <laughs> whale. Thanks for listening, uh, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Next week, we're going to be doing part two, so don't worry about whoop. it. Same same thing. Other shit Monday, we'll figure it out. Yeah, who knows? We'll see. We, so, something light, because these games are these games are long and dense, and we want to beat this one, so it'll be, it'll be something light and fun. 
it, it'll be it'll be the caprese salad of other shit Mondays. It's fine. <laughs> I like wait, all wait, the so culinary is, stuff. The opposite of light and fun is our D and D game. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah. Tomorrow's gonna be just heavy and dark. Heavy and not heavy fun. And what? Dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not fun at all. <laughs> Guys, why do we even play? <laughs> Oh, uh, that's right. To appease my ego. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. That's, that's fine. <laughs> well, it had to be said. <laughs> you know what we still love? The biggest marketplace. Randy Johnson. You can find oh. Randy Johnson. <laughs> you can find Mario Taliano's on it. So yep. clearly you got to go there. iTunes. Leave us a five-star iTunes review. Helps us out tremendously. So if there's something, we try to incentivize you a little bit. So if there's a game you want us to play, I guess host you want for an episode. Uh, we're more than halfway through this N64 list. So if you want to throw Thank up God. a suggestion. <laughs> oh my God, we're almost done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had to listen this whole time, guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We've produced some real quality shows, I feel like. <laughs> No, it's Tyler, did you play this game? Nope, me neither. Cool. I uh, want to talk about ravioli for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> now, these test are are like, are like Chinese cookie. We just have like shit to work with. <laughs> we have to it's make more it like work. medieval cooking, I feel like. Uh, would you like to eat our son or our daughter this evening? <laughs> I'll just, just get him some leeches. Just bleed, just bleed me for a while. Yeah. <laughs> So whatever you put in that, we promise we will get to it eventually. 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 Don't worry, guys. Uh, like Tyler said, we're going to be back talking about things. In the meantime, you can always find us on tadpog.com. Uh, there's show notes there. Check them out. I don't know what's going to be on there this time. Maybe maybe not a whole lot, but who knows. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook. or at facebook.com slash tadpog. There's a lot of cool people there. As always, they're doing a lot of cool shit. Uh, that is the best place to let us know how you felt about this particular episode. Uh, you'll see a post there. Um, just let us know, because uh, we appreciate the feedback. Uh, you can find us on Twitter. We are at Tadpog underscore podcast. It's cucumbersome, I realize. Uh, thank you for everybody who has been uh, retweeting us, uh, particularly our episode posts, because that really gets the word out to... Uh, you know, your grandmother who follows you on Twitter and needs to know about Tadpog. Yep. Uh, I'm sure she wants to hear. I, that's how Paul met my grandma. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, Nana. I'm sure they want to hear about how the Huddle House they've been eating at for the last five years. Some toothless woman had her tits out stick, for a while. Stick around long enough. Stick around long enough. <laughs> uh, you can call us if you want. Uh, feel free to give us a call at 270 883 Two five five five, and leave us a voicemail. If you do, uh, try to keep it under three minutes. Uh, you can also, alternatively, you can send us a text. Uh, I promise that I will fuck up whatever text you send. Uh, we do have a Patreon. Uh, people are donating on there, which is amazing. Uh, thank you for everybody who has done that so far. Uh, if you want to be one of the really cool people who... Uh, Donates, you can do that at patreon.com slash tadpog. Uh, we just got a recent donation uh, from Christopher P. Finch. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank you uh, for, for pledging on Patreon. We do really appreciate it. Um, it's a big deal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a big deal to... It helps us do a lot of things, and Dave talked about it. We talked about it today. There's, we have a lot of things we want to do. Yeah, we want to do new things. And Patreon and this really helps. is helping a lot. Yeah. Keeps the lights on. Yep. Keeps that keeps that internet host, uh, that web host paid. <laughs> keeps the pizza coming. Not yet. Man, we haven't bought nearly enough pizza with this money. That's time. how you summon a Sean Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Hookers and pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of his first rap album. <laughs> <laughs> and he's dressed like showbiz. So. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag more Miller. <laughs> uh, thanks for being on the show, Ramon and Nicole. Yep. Thank uh, you. Who are both younger than us. <laughs> I don't feel younger. Sorry. Dead inside. <laughs> it's all that uh, neurotic behavior. <laughs> <laughs> necrotic behavior. Ne necrotic, yes. <laughs> so, Ramon, our theme song. I was going to be polite and let Nicole do it, but I. Well, you said the first part. No. I'm going to ask Nicole the second part. <clears throat> okay. It is Moves by Sycamore Drive. 
So I was going to ask to call the second part. Oh, I, oh yeah, yeah. But she can say where it, it can be found. Okay. Where can they find that, Nicole? <laughs> In the show notes at tadpog.com. All right. So I want you guys together to decide hmm. how we're going to close this out. I like this collaborative decision. There hasn't been one before. There's never been a Nicole and Ramon collaboration. No, there hasn't. Except for that one time with Josh, but... <laughs> that was that was Tyler's favorite thing, because it was cuckolding. Because <laughs> he's my Josh, and you, guys, and you guys had to fuck it. How dare, how dare you? <laughs> I feel a little left uh, out, guys. You know, I don't know about this. Nicole, she's Thanks. there, and I will. I will do. You know what? I will do whatever. Are we still talking about the threesome? <laughs> <laughs> There's your stinger. <laughs> How do you want to close it out, Nicole? I don't know. I can't really. I mean, as our favorite Nintendo president. <laughs> Everyone pick their favorite Nintendo president. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> You're fine. I guess we can do it like your toothless Waffle House manager. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, perfect. All right, okay. everyone take their tits out. <laughs> They're out. <laughs> so until next time. Tyler O'Carragon. <laughs> 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 Pretty good. It's pretty good. How many times have we said that already? Ten? Pretty good. <laughs> I don't think good. I said I didn't say it at all last episode. I, I figured so you were done. I out of my way. Yeah, I figured you were done. <laughs> Not to say pretty I good or, a... oh, shit. <laughs> After Ryan <laughs> said that, I was so close to being like, well, that's the end of that. <laughs>